Now, I have got quite a lot of them, but I haven't made one for a couple of years. Can you believe it? So the ones that I have are getting a bit distressed. And I've had this fabric for ages. I've made lots of Japanese tote bags out of it and they, they look great. I've always had it in my head to make one as a bucket coat. But I've added a few features like a zip. Should I do up the zip? I don't like it done up. But I'll show you. So oh, I don't like my zips done up all the way like that. Which is why I love these double-ended zips. But you can get the same effect just by having loops, two loops or three loops up around this area and, and buttons. You get that same splaying out thing. But it's quite nice. Is it quite nice? Now, I know that this fabric will relax because I've made the bags. So it takes probably a couple of weeks of wearing for it to happen, but it does relax a lot. Now, when I wear these sorts of coats, because I, I'm a bit of an 80s person, I do like to push up my sleeves and roll up my sleeves and show like a bit of jumper or, or, or blouse or top underneath, or just pale, bare flesh. <laughs> so, my new bucket coat. So it's got pockets in here as well, look. So it's got pockets, which is the new sewing pattern. <laughs> Big advert now. Um, I don't know why I'm doing an advert, actually, because I've only got, I think, five paper patterns left at the moment and, um, you know, endless PDF downloads. But all of them now have, have the option of the, the in, whoops, one, one, the inseam pockets. Now, I've added these outer pockets. Can't remember what they're called now. Are they called what well, pockets when they're like that? Not sure. Anyway, so there's the back. Cool. Put my hands in there. Yep, yeah, there's the back. And I've, I've put a seam down the back. So these buckety bits at the side, they... <sighs> They, when you make your coat, you've just got to wait a little while and, and they do relax. And I'll show you on the wall coat so you know what I'm talking about. I'm just going to escape out my, my zip. So I've added this thing here and I don't know what it's called. I think it's called a placket. I'll show you some details in a minute um, and I'll show you these pockets as well. But I do usually wear these coats open or I just put a little button here at the top because I do think they look nice going like that. My sleeve keeps falling down. So do you want to see some details? Before that, I'm not sure if this demonstrates what I was talking about, but this wool coat, when I first made it, it was very sticky outy and I do feel like the buckety bits have relaxed. Right, come down here and have a look at some um, details. So the zip that I used, uh, I recycled, I reused from um, a puffer jacket where all the feathers had come out. And when I unpicked it, some of the nylon on the zip sort of frayed in places. So when I wore it yesterday, um, and I had it done up just in this area, I guess it might have created a bit of a stress point. So it kind of unfrayed. So that's why I've got this very Prada-esque, actually. I quite like it, um, tab going on here because I had to reinforce where it, reinforce where it frayed undone and then I folded it back and that became the part that I stitched in, which isn't why it's not perfectly straight there. Anyway, so. I really like what I did on the collar with the, the piping. I really liked what I did with the exposed seams, but I should have done it on the side seams as well because it did make it quite tricky. Um, yeah, 
inside. I've, I've, look, you can see how bad it is in there. I put bias binding on all of the seams. Let's show you the pocket sack. So that's like the, the pocket sack bit. On the pattern, mine's massive, so do feel free to trim it back. It depends upon the angle at which you've, you've put your points of your buckets into the, the facings, you see. But, oh gosh, <laughs> doing these pockets in this fabric was not mega easy, but I kind of think they look okay. I am thinking about doing a tutorial on these pockets. I know there are lots on the internet, but it is quite easy when you don't use weird fabric. But I'd like to see if I can just simplify it for, for our viewers a bit more. Because I know lots of you are scared of doing, well, pockets. Yeah, so they are my details. I always like to turn up the cuffs if it's got a nice inside. Uh, yeah, look, bias bound seams there. Is that enough? Yeah, and it's black. On camera it might look grey, but it is black, and I know it's going to soften up. I know it is. Now, I need your opinion about something. For my next coat that I'm making, and I'm going to show some of the process in a tutorial, the bucket coat, I've got this fabric that I've had, um, probably actually like my sleeves, since the 80s, and it, it's quilted paper fabric. It's so special and I've kept it for that long and I'm definitely going to make a paper dress out of it but I've always had in my mind to to make a, I don't know how it's going to look, is it too bright? Can you not see it? We'll do some close-ups in a minute but um, I know it's going to look fantastic in a bucket coat so it's double sided look at that double sided quilted paper fabric from the 80s I've no idea where I've got it from actually I think I do now remember hmm. it's not going to be hugely practical but I could keep it for special occasions and it's not that warm but it'll be great for spring and I could make a matching Japanese tote bag. What do you think? Should that be the tutorial? So I do have another spring bucket coat that I want to make, but I'm not sure it will necessarily be the tutorial because it's a bit more involved. And it, it's, it uses upcycled, recycled wool blankets But I should really stabilise the, the wool fabric because it's not meant usually for making clothes. And I don't want to do that. I want it to be more relaxed. So I'm not sure about that one, but, but I'll show you what I've got in mind. So it's using these recycled wool rugs, which are 100% wool. And I was thinking of if I've got enough in these two blankets, to have one side in one colour, one side in the other. I cut it on the cross, which I definitely would need to stabilise down the front, um, and attempt, <laughs> although they're different sizes, to match it up in some way, so it creates a kind of chevron effect. And then the seams inside, just to kind of oomph it up a bit and pick up the yellow, they're like bits of yellow thread in there. I'd use bias binding to the gold bias binding to finish off the edges. And then um, the back would be in two halves as well. Where's it gone? Oh, there we go. You see, it's a bit involved, isn't it, to be the <laughs> tutorial, if I want to show like an easy tutorial on making our, the bucket coat. Look. Can you imagine it? So like the different fronts would look a bit like that, wouldn't it? It's always slimming, isn't it, doing the chevron thing? And then at the back, my mum said I could have this. I found this at her house. 
So I thought maybe I could um, cut it right back and applique that onto the back and do some other shushi oomphing it up type thing. I thought I might put words across there as well. What do you think about that? Let me know what you think about my new bucket coat. I know one of the things that you're going to say about me using shiny black coated fabric, but try and avoid saying that. Um, but yeah, what do you think about my new bucket coat? I'm going to do a detachable uh, shower proof hood. We've got a tutorial on how to do that. But I am interested to know what you think about my paper fabric, the quilted one, and the uh, using the blankets as well. I guess I should hold that. YouTube does enough adverts, I think I could do one for me. So, not got many of these, but I am thinking about getting a, a short run of the patterns without, uh, pa as paper, without the envelopes, and then I'll just sell them for less. But you can get the PDF download, and it might be 30 pages. Thank you so much for watching, and see you again soon. Bye.